Hi everybody, welcome to Soapbox. My name is Mauro Di Pasquale. Soapbox is produced at WCCA-TV 13. I'm your host. I'm also executive director here at WCCA-TV, the People's Channel. We want to thank you for joining us. Without further ado, I'd like to get into today's uh, program. But I, with our guest here, I, I, before I introduce her, I was looking with her at the uh, MCAS results for the performance level uh, in math proficiency are higher. Massachusetts, Worcester in particular seems to be, looks like we're lower than the state average in many categories, grades three up. Um, so we're going to learn to talk about that and maybe there's a solution available for you and your, your children. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Olga Serebrenikov. Did I get it right? Serebrenikov. Okay. She's the, uh, one of the, she's a principal at, at a company called Math Altitude. School of Mathematics, Math Altitude. And uh, we're going to learn about Math Altitude. We're going to learn about uh, her concerns with uh, the way the schools are performing. And maybe there's some solutions through her organization. Uh, Olga, thank you for being here. It's nice, oh. nice to meet you. Nice uh, that you invited me. I'm very glad uh, to uh, have this <coughs> conversation with the audience, with you. And uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a pleasure. I'm very glad that you picked up on the topic we just uh, talked about a little bit. Uh, it's a result that were published uh, just um, this week about the latest uh, uh, MCAST results uh, in, uh, in Worcester. And unfortunately, the results are far from what we want them to be. Um, I already read a couple of reports, and uh, reports are very mixed. Uh, some are saying that, well, we're doing a little bit better, uh, or we are doing a little bit worse than last year by a few points. Uh, to me, it's not that important. If we are looking at the, uh, mathematics and the average percentage uh, of uh, kids proficient uh, or higher, is uh, 28, 29%, then it doesn't matter if uh, they were doing uh, 28 or 27 or 30 last year. It's so low that it's uh, shameful to talk about uh, any mm -hmm. improvement at this point. Yeah, so if I'm looking at this right, we see grade four mathematics, the state level is 47. Which is? That's low. It's very low. Right? It should it be 100%. Really right. <laughs> well, uh, let's be realistic. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, it's desirable, <laughs> but uh, if we are in um, 70, somewhere yeah. in the 70s, I would say that yeah. we achieved well, that incredible improvement. That should be proficiency, yes, really, right? Yes. But they're calling proficiency at 47%. And in the Worcester District here, it shows 29 for mm. that grade level. Right. And of course, we all know that there are many schools in Worcester that are... Um, uh, that have children who don't have... Uh, uh, all advantages uh, of others, they may be uh, coming from different background. So the schools are doing everything they could to uh, make their life better and improve their learning abilities. But still, uh, we should not be complacent. Mm -hmm. So uh, my point is I, I do not want to blame any, anybody. I do not want to, uh, to say mm -hmm. that uh, I know the entire solution, how we can all of a sudden fix this. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, my only uh, point about the results that we should not be complacent. We should see that they are low. We should acknowledge it. And we should try all together as a community, try to move forward. And uh, if uh, some of us can provide some means to improve it, uh, everything should be on the table. Yeah. I know, I know you don't want to, to place the blame and, and w without doing that. What, what do you think the, the reason is behind, so first of all, the tol we seem to tolerate the low level uh, in the state to begin with, but also in, in Worcester, it seems to be something that's tolerated to a certain degree. And I know, there are, as you pointed out, there are many factors to why some kids may or may not achieve. It may be, uh, you know, homes are different, their backgrounds are different, they may be struggling with the language, it may be a whole host of sickness or whatever. Uh, so I know there are a host, but why do you think we're so tolerant of that? That puzzles me. Uh, that really puzzles me because, uh, uh, as you said, the state level is very low uh, and Overall, by now, we all know that it's a concern on the um, 
country level that we are doing not as good as many other countries, we are not doing as good as uh, China or India. Pretty much we can name any country we are not doing as good as. I think last year the uh, overall result in mathematics for 10th grader was um, US uh, score 23 um, out of 34. So the positive thing is that it is acknowledged. Last State of mm -hmm. the Union address, the President Obama uh, was actually saying very uh, loud and very clear that uh, something needs to be done that we cannot uh, move on uh, with these results. And uh, he reiterated it uh, on a meeting with, uh, um, I think it was a uh, meeting uh, with Intel professionals. Um, maybe I'm kind of mistaken, but it was in February of uh, this year. And again, he was saying that in order to have a competitive uh, workforce, we need to educate our students. We need sure. to train. We should not be complacent. And again, the same happens now and here. I did read some report yesterday uh, about one of the schools that was underperforming, and they were mentioned that that school improved a great deal during this year, and I think they improved by a few points more than other schools. And I looked at the results of that particular school. Yes, they did improve by students in fourth grade have a percentage uh, 11 of mass proficiency. So maybe one grade has improved, another mm. hasn't. Yeah, yeah. So again, <coughs> this is very touchy discussion for many. Mm -hmm. um, our teachers doing great job, many of them. Um, our school uh, committees are trying to improve things. I would like to stay away from mm -hmm. pointing fingers. Sure. Yeah. But what I'm bringing uh, to Wooster, what I'm bringing to the table is a small school, essentially it's after school program that uh, will allow students to have additional uh, mass uh, classes, additional um, time spent to learn mathematics. Mm -hmm. And uh, to learn mathematics, maybe not in a conventional way, they uh, are custom here in mm -hmm. US. Um, I'm not trying to say it's better or mm -hmm. worse. Uh, it's a substitute, not at all. Mm -hmm. We want to augment what our schools are providing. Mm -hmm. We want to give parents a tool, an additional tool, uh, to be able to choose yeah. uh, whether they want uh, their kids only to go to school and uh, spend as many hours they're spending there doing whatever they're doing there. And if it's sufficient for them, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But maybe they also want to bring their kids uh, to our school uh, for two extra hours a week mm -hmm. and see the results mm -hmm. for themselves. Mm -hmm. My view on what is happening with mathematics and uh, by saying my view, I probably have sufficient uh, backing up by other educators and other people who are trying to do pretty much what I'm mm -hmm. doing, mm -hmm. is that for some reason we underestimate kids' ability. Kids are smart. You can take a kid from any uh, society level. Kids are smart, but they need to be pushed a little bit harder. They need to be taught more difficult concepts that they have uh, been taught now. I have looked in great details on everyday mathematics. That program that had a promising start. You look at the kindergarten level, it's interesting. First grade level, it's interesting. They incorporate different aspects of mathematics. Everything that we're talking in, in our school, uh, geometry, uh, elements of algebra, games. So you look at it on its surface and uh, it's wonderful, but it doesn't yeah. work apparently given the results. Yeah. Yeah. You start looking a bit in more details. Lots of games, lots of talks about so many different subjects, mm -hmm. lots of reintrodu reintroduction of concepts that have be been traditionally taught for ages differently. So parents now cannot even help their children to, right, uh, right. With, uh, with their homework right. unless they've been trained right. to understand yeah, how to deal with it. Parents need to be going through it again too. So yeah. 
The, prob the idea behind everyday mathematics was, I believe, very noble. The implementation of it, well, again, it's probably every single teacher can uh, take a program and improve it and take a program and adjust it. You, there is no solution for all. You need to take a solution and make sure that your child, uh, it, the solution works for that particular child. I understand there are many kids, so we have a very high uh, teachers per student ratio, right? Mm -hmm. um, still, that doesn't excuse. If it, it puts more pressure on a teacher, no questions about it, it's much easier to work with one-on-one -on -one or with three kids in the class or with five than with 17, but it's possible to work mm -hmm. with 17. Yeah. So uh, that, that's uh, yeah. what I essentially... So Ogre is the principal of Math Altitude School of Mathematics. It's now this is a, it's a for-profit organization, um, and it's mostly after school where kids can come in and get. It's more than just extra help, I think, with math, right? Because you're teaching them new methods as well, right? Methods that are yes, you're absolutely best meet right. The uh, yes, uh, it is not just extra help, and I want to uh, make it very clear. Uh, we I don't want to say very teaching, but we are trying to system uh, uh, to put some system into what kids already learned. Uh, we emphasize algebra and geometry much earlier than it's currently emphasized. We um, try to make sure that kids mastering concepts, not just heard of this yeah. concept. It's indeed uh, after school, so our, most of our classes starts after four o'clock and even as late as six o'clock every day of the week. We have full day of Sunday, so on Sunday we have classes starting uh, mm -hmm. as early as nine o'clock. It is for profit, but we just started, so mm -hmm. we, we're very, very new. It, it's a little bit of, mm -hmm. uh, fun to hear that we're for profit. Mm -hmm. But our tuition is very uh, affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, in a, I think on average it's uh, about $18 uh, per hour, mm -hmm. but uh, we also offer um, various discounts. We offer sibling mm -hmm. discounts, uh, referral discounts, mm -hmm. um, different payment options. Mm -hmm. uh, and in addition to it, because we do have that such a, a serious problem with education in Worcester, please come and talk to us. We will try to figure out if you cannot afford the full tuition. We will try to figure out uh, whether other options are available. Mm -hmm. At this stage, I mean, the whole reason my husband and I decided uh, to go all of a sudden, we are, we are engineers, we are mm -hmm. professionals, and uh, uh, he been very successful in his uh, professional career and uh, continues to be. I'm an engineer, but we wanted to give back something to this city. Mm -hmm. I had my second master's degree from WPI. Mm -hmm. I love the city. Uh, I love the school. But back, it was almost 20 years ago when I got my degree. And back then, I saw that students, very good, very bright mm -hmm. students, they were suffering with simple math concepts that they missed maybe in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So for us, I would love to say it's being profitable, mm -hmm. no questions about it. But more importantly, I would love to see the results going up. Mm. The, now, a couple of questions quickly. Um, how long do the students go when they go? They, do, do they sign up for one class a week or more? Uh, is it open? Well, we try to structure it uh, so it looks like a reg regular school. Mm -hmm. um, we try to encourage parents to bring their children early in kindergarten, first, second grade, mm -hmm. and make sure that they understand that it's not just one class uh, quick remedy or two mm -hmm. months quick remedy. This is full year commitment, and mm -hmm. uh, the best in best scenario, it's a uh, multiple year commitment. Uh, I did have a very peculiar conversation with one of my parents who brought his son for our summer school. And at the end of the summer school, I said, well, uh, are you bringing him for our school year? Because he really needs it. That very bright boy, but he really needs um, more systematic study of mathematics. And the father said, oh, he has this sport and that sport and this mm. and that. I, I cannot fit <coughs> it in. But we will come next summer. I said, all right, come next summer, we will fix what we will fix. But it would be much more uh, fruitful if parents bring 
bring their children mm. at the beginning of the year, not in the middle of the year, also we uh, have rolling enrollment. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as possible, we would uh, assess the current uh, student ability. Uh, so we uh, require every student to take a placement test, every student who is in um, uh, second uh, grade or higher, to make sure, because there is no one-to-one on, uh, -one correspondence. Mm -hmm. A student can be in fourth grade, and we already see mm -hmm. from this MCAS results, uh, mm -hmm. should be placed uh, with second So you second give every graders. student a placement every test? Every student gets <laughs> a placement test about one hour long that's completely free of charge. Every student encouraged to sit uh, through one class. Again, it can be free of charge if parents decide not to enroll the child after yeah. all, and uh, uh, see for themselves. But after it, it would be beneficial uh, to have a full year, at least full year commitment, because mm -hmm. you don't expect remedy right away. The mm -hmm. gap is so profound that uh, it takes time. Mm -hmm. And one more thing that uh, we need to talk about. I already mentioned that kids are smart. Mm -hmm. I already mentioned that uh, kids can learn. So why they don't learn mathematics? For some reason, they feel that, they, that it's not important, that they can get by with calculator and without it. So what we need uh, probably to shift the discussion toward why mathematics is important, why you need to have a critical thinking, why you have to have mm -hmm. logical thinking. You can be a lawyer and not to use calculus, but you need to know how to uh, build your defense strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, you can mm -hmm. uh, be, go to politics, but in this case it would be very nice of you to know how to deal with statistics. Yeah. So the mathematics is important in all aspects of life, and kids it looks like they're missing this point. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they're absolutely. not missing by themselves. They're missing <coughs> because somebody yeah, forgot hole, to mention it. Somewhere a hole, yeah. And the other point, it is okay if kids work hard. So in our school, it's not like we're going to have games every single class for f two hours. We will have some games, of course, otherwise you can keep the child attention, but they will work on problems. They will solve uh, word problems. They will do quizzes. They will compete with each other. There is nothing bad in competition. Yeah, yeah. You know, it creates so the desire to it. succeed. You know, it, it is all good uh, that in our society we, we try to be um, fair to everyone. It, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, from my well, accent, you hear <laughs> that I came from abroad. I'm not, uh, yeah. I was not born here. I appreciate everything that this yeah. society gives us. But on the other hand, we need to be a little bit more demanding to ourselves, to yeah. our children, and to make sure that they will succeed in this yeah. How does math altitude uh, in, you know, engage the student differently than, say, like the schools would, would do it? Well, uh, it's difficult for me to say about how, how school engages students, yeah. but in my class, and I already heard that she's my favorite student. I have a student whose parents brought her in and uh, uh, they told me up front, she's bad with mathematics and she hates it. And every class, the first time I was surprised, she said, oh, that's so cool. I showed her something. I showed her maybe not conventional way how to solve a difficult problem so she would not uh, need to uh, take a calculator and try to type all, mm -hmm. all numbers. But some shortcut how she could logically solve it faster. And she said, oh, that's so cool. Her father was sitting in the waiting room. Yeah. After the class, I asked, have you ever heard her saying that something is cool relating to mathematics? He said, no, never. <laughs> and yeah. as time progresses, I hear it more and more often. I told her, look, you're my favorite student. It's such a pleasure to teach you. And other students, I hear it from other parents who uh, are bringing their uh, kids in. They solve difficult problems, and they're asking me for more problems like that. We're talking with Ola uh, Serembrenikov. She's the uh, principal at Mal Math Altitude School of Mathematics, and they're located at 35 Harvard Street. That's behind the old courthouse here in Worcester. Uh, and this is this is pretty intriguing. Any any age kids can can attend your your school. Yeah. Do you also teach adults? No, 
No, no. I actually, I, my vision, if eventually this uh, enterprise grows up, I want to have seminars with adults. Mm -hmm. I do want to engage parents. We cannot do anything alone, neither me, no teachers in yeah. any school. Uh, we need to have a conversation with adults. Yeah. And I hope next year we will be able <coughs> to have these seminars. We have great institution in the, uh, in the yeah. city, WPI, Clark University, excellent schools. I do want to invite uh, people to talk to parents who would uh, mm -hmm. bring their kids yeah. to our school. I would like to speak to some of the organizations. I, I was trying to approach different libraries. Unfortunately, they don't uh, allow for profit mm -hmm. organizations to advertise there, uh, regardless if they, uh, these organizations are trying to solve this, the problem that currently exists. Mm -hmm. So if I can at least bring awareness that we do mm -hmm. have a problem. Yeah. I think I would achieve quite a lot already. So how can uh, you know people find out when classes are available and programs? How, how can they reach you if they're interested in um, you know the possibility of their child attending your classes at Math Altitude? Well, that's very simple. We have a website, uh, www.massaltitude.com. Uh, we have a program description on the website, a link to mass counts, uh, the schedule, the calendar, everything is there. Uh, they can call me. My phone number is 508-932-0344, and I would be very happy to speak to any parents who is interested. Um, we have a, a Facebook page, and we also are trying to distribute these uh, flyers uh, everywhere in the city and the surrounding um, towns, uh, where we also talk a little bit about ourselves. and. Uh, uh, we uh, have all information about the school here. So I do uh, hope that uh, people who are looking at uh, today's program are actually mm -hmm. uh, who are listening it. Uh, yeah, we'll also. put this on our website as well. We got Math Altitude, and all the information is here, mathaltitude.com. Uh, you can call Olga at, at 508-932-0344. Um, and again, it's the now enrolling through 2012 school year math exploration summer programs as well are available no, that's so for last uh, that for last was, summer but yeah, we will have it for, again next sure summer. It'll be, why not inquire early but uh, the thing is is to get maybe this will play an important role in raising some of those levels in our uh, yeah. with our students here well, well best best of luck to you in, in in the school and all you're doing sounds like a great endeavor uh, any final word we got about less than a minute left well, I, I would like to thank you for uh, engaging in this very important conversation. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I hope that your listeners would find it interesting and important enough to look us up. Oh, I'm sure. I, you know, my, my daughters come home from school with home, math homework, and sometimes I look at it and I go, I don't even understand it myself, so I think I might want to go to your school someday. Please come <laughs> in. <laughs> we want to thank Olga Serenbrenikov, uh, principal from Math Altitude School of Mathematics, again, 35 Harvard Street, behind the old courthouse. Um, maybe we can get a couple of these and leave them in our lobby or something. Oh, absolutely, so, yeah. At WCCA-TV. Thank you, and again, good luck with that. And it's mathaltitude.com for more information. Uh, until next time, I'm Marl De Pasquale, and I look forward to seeing you on WCCA-TV 13, the People's Channel.